What is going on everyone? Ram Dean with you here in our downtown Toronto studios and this is Fight News Now Extra. Along with Robin Black we discuss some of MMA's biggest stories. In the news, Bellator 138 is a record breaker. A Russian is out of his upcoming tilt and a tough American is in. The strawway champion sustained an injury and may have to go under the knife. Bellator 138, which took place this past Friday in St. Louis, Missouri, drew a peak number of 2.1 million viewers on Spike TV. The event, headlined by Kimbo Slice and Ken Shamrock, outdrew the promotion's 131 event, which featured Tito Ortiz versus Stefan Bonner in November of 2014, and boasts a peak of 1.8 million viewers. What does that all mean? It is fantastic news, not only for Bellator, but it's the sport of mixed martial arts. Russian fighter Rustam Kabalov has been forced out of his July 25th tussle with scrappy team alpha male representative Danny Castillo. In for the Jackson Winkle John fighter is the ultra tough New Jersey based fighter Jim Miller. The BJJ black belt is looking to rebound from his only two fight losing skid of his career while Castillo was one in three in his last four. And after successfully defending her 115 pound title, Joanna and Jacek sustained a broken right thumb and may require surgery. The champion's manager told MMA Fighting's Ariel Hawani the news on Monday. The win made it 10 in a row for the Polish fighter. And tune in 7 p.m. this Saturday as Fight Network is pleased to present our preview show leading into UFC Fight Night, Leota Machida, who is taking on Yoel Romero. All the action taking place in Florida. And then the prelims right here on FN at 8 p.m. featuring Alex Cowboy Oliveira. Joined by Robin Black, Bellator 38 going down in St. Louis on Friday. A lot of momentum coming out of that show. Will it carry over into Friday night's event? Uh, the former champion Alexander Volkov taking on the menacing looking Czech Congo. UFC fans are used to seeing this guy. Pat Curran on the card, Dave Rickles, John Alessio. Um, Joe Schilling, a former teammate of Nick Diaz and Glory Kickboxer. Do you think people are going to start tuning into this product after seeing it maybe for the first time? Yeah, a lot of people watched uh, that last show. A lot of people. And, you know, I don't know what they thought of Kimbo versus Ken. Some of them liked it, some of them didn't. And uh, ESPN reported on yeah. it. I mean, it got a lot of attention, but the rest of this card was fantastic. you got to figure some of those people are now like, Oh, that thing that isn't the UFC, that's a, a lot like the UFC, that's <laughs> yeah. really good. Oh, it's on again, let's watch it. But they definitely won't get that kind of number again. They have become a promotion that goes and puts on big events that are this big, and then the rest of their stuff is that big. But, you know, that, that works. Uh, you kind of look at what Bellator is doing and think they're doing a great job. But, you know, we talked a lot on Monday on Five Rounds about Joanna Jinjacek. We talked a lot on Five Rounds today about it. But we got distracted by Bellator. But, I mean, that girl looked phenomenal did, at yeah. 115 pounds. She really did. So good, in fact, that people are taking note of that division. They're talking about her as a star. And even despite all of that, a lot of the conversation has been about Bellator and about Shamrock and Kimball. I think one of the reasons why is because we still don't know. Yes, and Jacek looked great. She put on a dominant performance. What it, we, I think we all expect a champion to do. Now it's on for the next task. Let her get through this surgery. Let's see what happens. We know that Jessica Aguilar, a girl that was touted as the best 115 mm -hmm. pound fighter out there, she's made her way into the UFC. Let's wait for these girls yeah. to eventually face off for that championship. Outside, we're trying to bring interest to the other, other promotions in the mixed martial arts landscape. Uh, we've talked about it in the past. And Joanna and Jacek, the reason why she's so good, coming from that Polish background, KSW, yeah. they're developing great talent there, just like the Bellator product is doing in uh, North America as well. And you look really across the globe, we're starting to see great MMA promotions all over. And I think competition is good. It will help the sport of mixed martial arts. For sure. And uh, man, calling those KSW shows are super, super fun because they put on exciting shows. Bellator has been doing really well, but it is the UFC that should get the credit yep. for raising the global quality of mixed martial arts, the global quality of combat, because by becoming so big and so successful, they created at least the illusion of the opportunity for these athletes to get paid a lot. By creating that, more gyms will invest more time, more coaches will invest more time. It becomes worthwhile. You talk to great Muay Thai and great kickboxing coach like Duke Rufus, that was his world. 
start to fall in love with the UFC, start to fall in love with mixed martial arts, and then realize that he can make a great living in there. So it attracts coaches and fighters from all different disciplines too. But we've talked about it in the past. Over the last number of years, I don't think anybody out there was saying, you know, my goal is to be, if you're training in mixed martial arts, oh, I want to be a Bellator fighter. Uh, I think the idea of if you're going to be a professional athlete in this sport, you essentially leapfrog all the other promotions or get your feet wet there to make the move to the world's biggest promotion being the ultimate fighting championship. And now that we're seeing a lot of fighters have some things to say about the whole Reebok deal yeah. and the way the contracts are structured, so on and so forth. Bellator doesn't have those restrictions. We're seeing yeah. guys make money in one FC or one championship now. So I think the yeah. landscape is really different than it was not just five years ago, but two years ago. I, I agree 100%. And people go and not only do they want to become UFC fighters, they go to the gym and they train UFC, T-R-A-N-E. Yeah. And they train the UFC. But you know, for real, in Poland, people go to the gym and train KSW. Yeah. They really do because globally there are other uh, organizations. One championship is putting on awesome fights. They understand their management. The people putting it on understand that market. They understand excitement. They understand the martial arts and selling, not just a, wow, that's the, that guy's got dynamite in both hands, but they sell the beauty of the martial arts and they sell competition in martial arts. They're doing something special too. Bellator, on the other hand, it's been a lot of fun. They're doing great, but they are the big, flashy, shiny promotion yes, right now. But there's room for all of them. It. And that's what it comes down to. I think that, you know, in the past we've heard certain promotions, Strike Force, M1, uh, Elite XC, they were willing to share talent. They can co-promote. The UFC not willing to go down that route. And I think we're going to probably see more of it. You know, bring in some of the fighters from World Series of Fighting yeah. to Bellator or KSW yeah. over to one championship. That and would be cool. And I think that would be cool. Uh, but of course, the way you make the most money in mixed martial arts is still by becoming a UFC champion. Yes, uh, and uh, the UFC is the big dog. It will be for the foreseeable future. And we have them to thank for creating this giant, globally expanding, beautiful mixed martial arts world. That's it for us. Don't go anywhere. More Fight News Now Extra is still coming your way.